I've been programming for years, but there's a one thing that used to drive me absolutely crazy when I was learning, and I was spending hours watching tutorials, reading documentation, and taking notes, only to completely forget everything just a week later. Now this probably sounds familiar to you, and that's why in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how I would learn programming from scratch in 2025 using a topic I genuinely don't know well, which is computer vision. And I'm going to show you the exact system that I wish I had when I was starting out so you can actually retain what you learn instead of constantly relearning the same concepts over and over again. All right, so first things first, you need a clear, specific goal. Not learn to code, but something concrete. So for me, it's going to be build a real-time object detection system that can identify and track different objects in a video stream using Python and OpenCV. Yes, very detailed and specific. Now for you, it may be land a job in 12 months as a Python backend developer. It doesn't matter what the goal is, but you need to ask yourself, why do you even want to learn how to code? And make sure that you're 100% clear on this. Now having this specific goal means that every piece of content that I or you consume is going to serve this purpose. So no more endless tutorial rabbit holes, everything is to serve this goal. Alright, now at this point, once we have the goal, we need to make a plan or a roadmap. And this is where most people go wrong. They start learning randomly without any kind of plan. Now this is like getting in a car and not knowing where you're gonna drive. You'll go somewhere, but probably not where you want to. So you need a roadmap, and let me show you how I'm gonna build mine for computer vision. Now because I'm learning something that I don't know a lot about, I'm gonna start by doing some research. So I'm gonna look up some YouTube videos like roadmaps, I'm gonna look up some articles, for example, here's one on Medium, here's one from OpenCV, and then I might look up some other more technical stuff like how to detect an object in OpenCV Python. The point is that I'm trying to get some kind of information so I know where to start when it comes to my roadmap. Now, of course, with all of this information, I can consume it, I can try to take notes and remember it, but it's just difficult to do that. So I wanna show you a tool that's really helpful, and that's called Recall. Now, fortunately, I was able to team up with Recall for this video, but they're free to use, and it's actually a really valuable tool that I wish I had when I was just starting out. Now, in short, what Recall allows you to do is to summarize any of the content that you're looking at and pretty much keep track of all of it in a unified knowledge base. There's a lot of other features that I want to show you rather than just tell you about, and let me give you a quick example. So if you look at the Recall application here, you can see that it shows me a bunch of the stuff that I've been browsing recently. If I click into one of the cards, I can see a summary of all of the content. I can actually chat with it directly and ask it questions, and I can get quiz questions generated. But what's really interesting is that if you use the Recall Browser extension, if I go to, for example, this article right here, I can click on the Recall Browser extension, and then I can just go ahead and save this article automatically to my Recall Knowledge Base. So you see it shows me a summary, I get the reader, it starts generating some connections for me. And if I go back to recall, so let's go back to the main page here, you can see automatically what I was browsing just pops up in my knowledge base. Now this doesn't just work for articles, it works for things like YouTube videos as well. So if I open up the extension here, you can see that it gives me the summary of all of the content. It automatically actually labels this for me. Then if I go back to recall, you can see that this card has been created and it's keeping track of all of the resources that I'm using. Now here on this page, everything gets automatically categorized for me so I can click through the different topics. And then of course, if I want, I can go into one of these topics. I can change the category if I want and I can go to chat. So here I can just ask it something like, what is the first thing I should learn? And then it should give me the answer by directly pulling from this context. And there we go, it says the answer is to learn mathematics. So that's the basics on Recall. It can do a lot more stuff, but let's look at that later. Now, once you build the roadmap, you need to actually do it. And more importantly, you need to track it. Now, I've always believed that something that gets tracked always gets improved, whether it's tracking my finances, weights, or in this case, coding progress. I've always seen better results when I track something, especially over a long period of time. And importantly, you need to see your progress visually. Now, this is especially important for motivation so you can go back and see how far you've come. Now there's tons of ways to do this and previously I would just write this in journal entries but in this tool here it's practically automatic. So overall the most important thing when it comes to tracking your progress is to make sure that you're marking down all of the resources you're using, what you accomplished in each day, and where you need to go next. 
because one of the hardest parts about self-learning something is not knowing what that next day is going to be. And as much as I hate something like the university system, the advantage that you do get there is that a plan is already given to you and you just need to follow that in order to pass the course. It may not be the most effective, but it takes that step away from you where it can actually be very time consuming to come up with what the next activity is gonna be. So that's why it's very important that you have the roadmap and you track your progress every single day. For example, one thing that I get all of my dev launch students to do is to fill in a stupid simple journal entry every single day even if they didn't do anything to force them to at least open the laptop and type something in. Now this simple act of just opening it up helps build the discipline that you need to really make solid progress and to build some momentum. Now obviously basic journals and notes are great but I want to show you something in recall here that's absolutely game changing especially if you're learning a lot. Now that's called augmented browsing. Now I'll quickly turn this on in the extension settings. It's completely local, so no data leaves your device, but watch what happens when I'm browsing new content. See how it's connecting this new article about neural networks to the OpenCV fundamentals that I saved earlier. This is exactly how your brain should be making connections, but now it's happening automatically as you browse. So at this point, we've come up with our goal, We've created a roadmap or a plan, we're tracking our progress, and what's next is to make sure that you're constantly challenging yourself. Now here's where most people get learning completely wrong. They think that understanding a concept means that they've learned it, but there's a massive difference between recognizing something and actually being able to use it when you're stuck at two in the morning debugging code. So you need to constantly challenge yourself, and here's my secret weapon for doing that. I always use AI to generate problems that push me just beyond my comfort zone. So every time I learn a new concept, I'm not just saving it in a note or a card, I'm immediately putting it to the test. Now you can do this in many different ways, but watch me do this in recall. So I can generate quiz questions from any of the content that I've gone through, even my own notes. But I'm not just talking about simple, what is OpenCV questions. These are deeper, more complex problems that aren't just simple trivia, but actually test your problem solving ability. Now generating these quiz questions are great, but we need to take it a step further. So rather than just going through the quizzes, I always take these concepts and I challenge myself to implement them immediately. So I'll open up a coding environment and I'll try to build something with what I just learned, even if I fail miserably. And this is crucial. You need to fail and you need to fail a lot. Your brain doesn't actually learn from your success, it learns from your struggle. And that's why I always say to code is really just to struggle a lot until you find the answer. When you're running into bugs and errors that take you hours upon hours to solve and then you finally come across the solution, that's where the real learning happens. Now I always tell people if you're not getting error messages then you're not learning fast enough. Every single error is like a mini challenge that forces your brain to think differently and to make new connections. Now the beauty of using recall here in this process is that when I do solve a problem, even if it's a small one, I can save that solution as a note. But more importantly, when I encounter a similar problem weeks later, recall's augmented browsing will surface that previous solution automatically. Perfect, so now instead of mindlessly scrolling social media, I can review these challenges during dead time, and what's best for me is that Recall has a mobile version, so I can do this on my phone when I would normally just be scrolling TikTok. But here's what's brilliant. Recall creates a personalized space repetition schedule, so you're reviewing concepts right before you're about to forget them. And since these are problem-based reviews, not just facts, you're actually strengthening your problem-solving muscle memory. Now the goal here isn't to remember everything perfectly, it's just to build that pattern recognition so that when you face a new challenge, your brain can quickly connect it to problems that you've solved before. And that's how you go from someone who follows tutorials to someone who can actually build things. Now, of course, you can do this whatever way you want, but I genuinely did find that Recall is very helpful at giving you that kind of spaced repetition that you need, and that's why I'm recommending it here. So now that we've done all that, let me put this into four steps that you can follow continuously whenever you're trying to learn something new. Now that's learn, practice, apply, and review. But the problem that most people have is reviewing, and that's why previously I made sure to emphasize that you need to track your progress. So here, let me hop over into Recall and show you how I would review my content using a tool like this. Now there's many ways to review your content in Recall, 
For example, you can go to the review tab and from here you'll get this spaced repetition review of various questions. And if we go to cards and questions, we'll actually show you when the questions will be asked based on the spaced repetition schedule, the recall setting to help you retain this information. But what I think is really cool is this graph tab. Here you'll get a visual representation of everything that you've learned. And sure, it can look a little bit crazy sometimes, but you can filter this by category. So for example, if I scroll over here, you see that we have Python and OpenCV. That then connects down here to OpenCV face recognition. And what's interesting is that you can make your own connections as well. So for example, if we go to recall and maybe we go here to the complete guide to image processing techniques in Python. If we open up the notebook, you'll see that there's these connections that are created automatically. So Python is a connection, OpenCV is a connection. And if you click on connections, it shows you all of the ones that we have. However, you may want to add your own connection and link this to your own notes. So for example, if I go to pre-processing techniques here, I can press on this lightning bolt and I can create a link to my own notes or to something else to really build my own system in recall here and connect all of this knowledge how I'd like. So here you can see that it's prompting me to create a new card called pre-processing techniques, or I can connect this to an existing resource that I have. So I went with a new card here. And now that I click on this, it brings me into the notebook and I can start writing any notes that I have that I want to connect to this topic. I can also use the slash and when I use slash, I can add a connection here, like, you know, networks or something directly inside of recall. So this is super cool. And it allows you to create really deep interconnected knowledge that doesn't just rely on the AI doing it, you can make the connections as you see fit. So to wrap all of this up, I want to say the following. In 2025, the programmers who succeed aren't just the ones who can write code. They're the ones who can learn continuously and actually remember what it is that they're learning. Now your knowledge compounds over time, but only if you have a system to capture it, connect it and apply it. Now the difference between programmers who plateau after a few years and those who keep going isn't talent, it's methodology. The ones who keep advancing have figured out how to turn every problem they solve, every tutorial they watch and every bug they fix into permanent knowledge that builds on itself. Many people treat learning programming like filling a bucket. They pour in a bunch of information and they hope that it sticks. But real learning is like building a web. Each new concept needs to connect to what you already know, and these connections are what make you a better problem solver. So whether you're learning computer vision like me, diving into machine learning, or picking up your first programming language, the framework is the same. Set a clear goal, make a plan, track your progress, challenge yourself constantly, and most importantly, build a system that captures not just what you learn, but how the different concepts connect to each other. Now you can build your own system or use whatever tool you want, but I genuinely think that Recall is great for this and it's something I wish I had earlier when I was learning and why I partnered with them for this video. Now overall, the goal here isn't to become a human stack overflow. It's just to develop this kind of deep connected understanding that lets you look at any new programming challenge and immediately see the patterns, connections and potential solutions. Now that's how you go from someone who copies code to someone who actually creates it. Now look, if you guys found this video helpful, let me know what topic you want to see next on the channel. And I'd love to hear about your journey as you're learning programming. Anyways, guys, thanks very much for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.